Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In the previous lecture, we explained the inflectional category of case. We basically tried to make a distinction between the three types of cases. So we have distinguished between the nominative case, which is assigned to subjects, the accusative case, which is assigned to objects, namely direct objects, and the dative case, which is associated with indirect objects. And the last one was the genitive case, which is associated with possessive constructions. In today's lecture, we continue our explanation of the inflectional categories, and we're going to see tense, aspect, and mood. So tense, aspect, and mood are commonly abbreviated as T-A-M, and they are also called tense modality aspect, abbreviated as T-M-A. You might find both orders in the books of grammar. And they refer to the grammatical system in a language that covers the expression of tense which means the location of, ten, of, of, of uh, the location of tense in the line of time. And aspect, which is about the continuous flow of time or the repetitive occurrence of actions. And mood or modality, which is about the degree of necessity, obligation, probability, ability, and so on. So the T-A-M, tense aspect mood, always go together. And this is a convenient uh, expression, to, which means to associate them uh, together, because it is often difficult to separate them in a language. Often, in a two of tense aspect and mood, or all the three, so sometimes you find tense aspect or aspect and mood or tense and mood and so on may be conveyed by a single grammatical construction or a single morphological mark. So most of the time, especially in English, which is a language in which you have weak morphology on the verbs, you don't find morphological marks of tense separated from those of aspect, separated from those of mood. Most of the time, they go together and they are expressed by the form of the verb by one morphological form. Now we see, we're going to see each one of them and we'll explain what they mean. So tense is the grammatical term that refers to the time when the action of the verb occurs. So we can speak about past, present, or future tense. Now the question is, what's the difference between tense and the time? Very simply, tense is a grammatical term. Time refers to uh, uh, what exists in nature. When you say past, present, future, it's a, it's a term which refers to time in its, in its uh, uh, natural flow. The time frame of an action is usually established by referring to the present moment. This means simply, or this simply means, uh, I'm sorry, there is a mistake there, that we speak about the simple past and the future in relation to the present tense. So we always speak about the grammatical tense by reference to the present tense. However, some tenses establish their time frame by referring to other actions in the past or in the future. For example, the past perfect tense indicates a past action that occurred prior to the completion of another past action. So, it is the past, in other words, it is the past of the past. 
you should always you, you must always have a past action and then when another action occurs before it it is expressed by the past perfect then you have the future perfect tense which indicates a future action that will have occurred before another one in the future. You can say, for example, by next Monday, I will have finished with the course. So it means that when next Monday comes, which is the future, the action of delivering the courses will be finished aspect is the second inflectional category unlike tense it is not concerned with placing events on a timeline rather aspect is concerned with making distinctions about the kinds of actions that are described by verbs so the action can be progressive punctual habitual and so on the most fundamental aspectual distinctions that exist are represented in many languages by the perfective aspect and the imperfective aspect. So essentially, the perfective aspect looks at an event as a complete action, whereas the imperfective aspect views an event as the process, as the process of a repeated or habitual event so we say for example john is explaining the lesson that's of course is present tense but the aspect of the action is continuous it's imperfective it's still going on but when we say john explains the lesson it's his habit it doesn't mean that he is explaining the, the, the lesson all the time. It simply means that it's part of his job or part of his duty is to explain the lesson. So the tense is present, but the action can be habitual. It can be progressive and so on. Now the following inflection category is mood. In a grammar, mood is used to refer to a verb category or a form of the verb which indicates whether the verb expresses a fact, the indicative mood, it is, it is used to express facts, or a command, and this is uh, called the imperative mood, or a question, it's called the interrogative mood, a condition, and it is called the conditional mood, or a wish or possibility, and this is expressed by the subjunctive mood. I will try to give examples for each of these. So the indicative mood is the most common and is used to relate facts and objective statements. You say, for example, Tommy gets up early in the morning. The verb gets up is in the present tense. It's an indicative mood. It just expresses a fact. It gives or you can give a statement using the indicative mood. We can simply say that it is the mood which is neutral. The following type of mood is the subjunctive mood, which is used more commonly in French than in English. I mean, in French, it has a morphological mark, whereas in English, it does not have this morphological mark. It is used to express opinions and feelings, okay, or subjective thoughts. You can say, as an example, it is too bad that John's parents are dead, infected by COVID-19, for example. You, 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 if you see, R, R is, uh, in its normal form, there is no change, even though we are expressing a an emotion a subjunctive uh, mood whereas in the french example il est dommage que les parents de jean soient morts so as you can see les parents 
in the normal, in the indicative mood, you are going to say les parents sont morts. But here, the form of the verb which is used is soi. It expresses, it reflects the subjunctive mood of the speaker. And then the following type of mood is the conditional mood. It is used to express hypothetical or contrary to fact statements. Example in English, if John were smart enough, he would have succeeded. That's the present tense of the conditional mood. The last type of mood is the imperative mood. It is used to give, to give direct orders or commands. You can say, John, get up. John, get up. It's an order. So that's the end of our lecture today about uh, tense aspect and mood. In the following lecture, we're going to see uh, two other inflectional categories, namely agreement and voice. So thank you very much and see you then.